this is a two and a half hours workshop. Uh, so what we'll do, I'll be talking about what is any logic, what is uh, modeling, methods in simulation modeling, and uh, multi-method modeling. This is the unique thing that uh, any logic does. All right, so this is the uh, agenda. Um, I will do two live things. I will do live demo of already built models using <coughs> models uh, built using different, different uh, modeling methodologies. And then I'll try to build uh, a model in front of you. So that will be a challenge. Uh, and then we have a uh, discussion. Uh, please do make this uh, workshop as interactive as possible, so ask questions, I'll try to answer as I'm going, uh, so don't, don't be shy. Um, our company, so um, we do two things, we're a simulation software vendor, we are a vendor of AnyLogic uh, simulation modeling tool, and we're a consulting company. This is the leading business, this is about like 80% of our revenue, uh, this is a uh, secondary business. As every vendor, we, we do have a consulting department and we, we build models. And we have three offices. The headquarters and uh, development is in St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, we have uh, AnyLogic Europe in Paris, France, and we have AnyLogic uh, North America based in New Jersey, United States. Uh, at the moment, we have about uh, 700 commercial organizations using uh, AnyLogic and about one thousand universities worldwide uh, using uh, AnyLogic for uh, teaching. And uh, in total we have several thousands of users. AnyLogic, as you may know, or not know, is a uh, general purpose uh, simulation modeling software. Uh, although it does explicitly support uh, a couple of uh, domains by domain-specific libraries, uh, but our uh, range of applications is very, very diverse. So um, uh, let's say the top, uh, top areas are logistic, transportation, supply chains, uh, healthcare, really different kinds of healthcare, from uh, processes in healthcare like hospital capacity planning to policies and uh, epidemiology uh, uh, problems. Uh, manufacturing, all kinds of business processes and service industry, a lot of uh, defense users, uh, especially in the, United, in the United States and in France, um, all kinds of strategic planning in uh, market, human resources, uh, product and project management, etc., etc. Uh, these are just some commercial plans. As, as you can see, again, <coughs> uh, Defense, um, metallurgy, um, logistics, well, it's food, but it's logistics, uh, business processes, um, again, defense, uh, pharmaceuticals, etc. Really wide, uh, wide range of companies. Uh, to modeling. You guys know this stuff, but I love this slide and I show it every time, so you will not be able to skip it. That slide is about modeling. So uh, we have the real world and the problem appears in the real world and we need to find the solution. So in many cases direct experiments in the real world are either not possible or uh, expensive and, and we need to find other way to, uh, to obtain the solution. So what we do, we go up from the real world to the world of models. This is abstraction process. We throw away, away things which we think are not important to solve the problem. We leave other things, we apply, we map the real system to a certain modeling language, and here's the model. In the world of models, we do various experiments, uh, calculation, simulation, uh, optimization, parameter variation, etc., etc. We find the solution in the uh, model world, and then we map it back to the uh, to the real world. So the whole thing is about <clears throat> going through the risk-free space where experiments are um, well do not cost a lot, um, really. 
Uh, that is modeling. Now, there are different kinds of models. Uh, metal models, the models that we have in our hands and apply all the time to make decisions every day. Um, let's say PowerPoint org chart is still a model. Uh, physical models, formulas, analytical models, spreadsheets, again, kind of analytical models and uh, simulation models. So, of course, we, <coughs> we're going to talk about this. Uh, simulation model is actually an executable model. And this is important. With the Excel model, you can say calculate. With the simulation model, you say run. So, uh, a simulation model is actually a set of rules that uh, allow you to uh, <coughs> obtain the next state of the system in time given the current state. Rules allow to move, to build a trajectory of the system, uh, of the dynamic system uh, in time. The rules can be different and the languages can be different. Uh, I guess most of you are used to uh, discrete event modeling because traditionally winter sim is a discrete event uh, methodology conference. So the rules are really uh, hidden in the in the process flow charts but that's not the only uh, not, not, not the only approach to simulation modeling there are other kind of languages and other kinds of methodologies how to build the rules uh -huh. and how to obtain this trajectory of the system in time and we will talk a little bit about all of them so uh, today there there are there exist three uh, methods in uh, simulation modeling uh, they will be uh, located on this abstraction level scale. So uh, down there we have low abstraction models with lots of details where we do have individual objects, uh, sizes, velocities, uh, distances, timing. Up there uh, they will be very abstract models where we may not really have the individual objects but only their quantities. Uh, and we will be talking about more global things. So the methods are <coughs> first yeah, is discriminant modeling, which uh, I personally think the better name for this will be the process-based modeling because let's say agent-based models are also discrete events. But anyway, this is the kind of the common term for that kind of stuff. So here you try to think of a system as a process with entities and uh, sequences of operations, entities, resources, queues, and delays. This is what discriminant modeling uh, is about. Uh, system dynamics. Anybody in this room familiar with system dynamics? Mm, quite a few. Uh, maybe a third. That's good. Um, System dynamics uh, is typically a uh, strategic level modeling method. We do not care about individual objects. Uh, we only uh, represent their quantities and the dynamics of their quantities. And we try to uh, map the system to the what is called stock and flow diagram. Stocks, uh, flows, and the number of feedback loops. That's the typical structure of a um, system dynamics model. No entities, no resources, nothing. Mm, individual, individual things lose their personality. Only aggregates. That's uh, system dynamics. The, uh, these two uh, approaches are pretty old. They, are, they both uh, have celebrated their uh, half century uh, anniversaries. So, um, but there is a newer one which is agent based modeling. Agent based modeling, uh, I'd say uh, people start to apply agent based modeling for practical pro problems. I mean, I think, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, real modelers, not really, not academic modelers, but industrial modelers. In the uh, year 2002 2003, for a number of reasons. Technology, uh, hardware, memory, processors, um, those kind of things. 
uh, agent-based models are can be um, can have really uh, very low, or very high abstraction level. Let's say here, model of a battlefield where agents are individual soldiers, or uh, strategic level model where agents are companies competing against each other. So these models really spread across um, the whole abstraction level um, scale. Uh, the methodology behind this thing uh, is the following. Uh, let's say we are to model a certain kind of system, but we don't, we don't see a process in there. We cannot really identify entities or resources, or we cannot think in terms of sequences of operations that are happening. Uh, but we do have some information about how individual parts or elements of the system behave. And then uh, what we can do, we can um, try to describe individual behaviors of each uh, object in the system um, using any kind of language and then put them together in one model and let them interact and see what happens. That is what agent-based modeling is about. Um, traditional simulation modeling softwares that are available, they uh, typically support one particular uh, modeling method. Let's say a system dynamics area. These are the three main softwares. They're fine there. The language is very standard and nothing has been done to that language for maybe 40 years. And we have like Vancey, Parsim, and I think Stella, uh, just three, three. There are converters between the tools. Uh, discrete end modeling, uh, tens if not hundreds of tools. Uh, no standard language. Uh, all are, let's say, almost incompatible dialects. Some tools would support a particular area like material handling or uh, business processes. Some would be general purpose like green or extensive. Converters between the tools. No way. They're, people are not building them. Uh, and it'll be hard to build uh, just because of language differences. In agent-based modeling, no uh, professional tools. Uh, there are open source projects like the, uh, let's say, Swarm and Repast. Uh, available in multiple languages. Um, you need to be a, a programmer to, um, to develop uh, models, uh, as you using Swarm or Repass. There are also uh, simple GUI tools like NetLogger or Escape uh, or Mason where uh, you can build models, let's say, graphically, but these are just toy models. Uh, dynamic systems is the en engineering area. We're not really concentrating on this area, but uh, okay, here this world is pretty much dominated by MATLAB, uh, differential equations, uh, sophisticated numerical methods, etc. Now, um, with any logic from the very beginning, we designed the tool as a multi-method supporting all three uh, modeling paradigms. And it's built on uh, modern and flexible object-oriented platform. Um, underneath there is Java and Eclipse, but any logic is a graphical tool. So the advantages, uh, it's remarkable flexibility. Uh, by flexibility, I mean this. Um, you will never use workarounds when trying to uh, match, uh, sorry, to map the, the behavior of the real system to the model language because you always will be able to find the right construct within the tool. Uh, you can mix methods and you can switch between methods as you are developing the model. For example, you can start sketching the model as very high level system dynamics thing. And then as you proceed, you may decide, okay, this is not the right level of abstraction. I need to bring more details into the model. I need to, let's say, have individual uh, properties. Okay, then, uh, uh, you can switch from system dynamics to discrete event or to agent-based, um, staying with one platform, one tool. Uh, this is basically uh, a summary of um, what I told, and this is the uh, main reason for multi-method modeling. Every experienced modeler 
let's see, the screwman modeler uh, knows that every now and then you need to fight with the modeling language uh, because the model language cannot express what you want to express. Uh, and what you do, either you know, build cumbersome constructs with the model language or you just think, okay, I will not model this. I will treat that part of the problem as exogenous to the model. And I will only use some numbers representing that. And uh, sometimes this is a serious limitation because our desire is to model more aspects of, uh, of things if we want to model more aspects. 